Hi, I'm Mike Thornton from Pro Tools Expert, and today we're going to take a look at the Nifty Mini Drive, which is a carrier that takes micro SD cards and enables you to fit them into the SD slot on the side of most MacBooks, and unlike any other solution, is completely flush with the side of the computer. So let's open the box and take a look. Yes, I'm using one of those single-sided razor blades from my old tape editing days, but all it gets used for now is opening boxes. Inside the box we have the nifty mini drive and a hooky thing which is designed to help remove the nifty drive from your computer. So let's take the nifty drive out of the box and you can see that it has the contacts so it will look like a normal SD drive to the computer and has a matching anodized aluminium end plate to match the side of the MacBook. The Nifty Mini Drive comes with a 2 gig micro SD card, which may be okay for documents and the like, but for use with Pro Tools, we need higher performance micro SD cards. So let's take out the 2 gig card. And we're going to test three different micro SD cards, all from SanDisk. Now, I always recommend using SanDisk, but do make sure that you buy them from a reputable supplier, as there are a lot of fakes out there. Each of these cards has a different data rate. The first is the SanDisk Ultra and is rated at 30 megabits per second. The second is a SanDisk Extreme and is rated at 45 megabits per second. And finally, we have the Extreme Pro, which is rated at 90 megabits per second and the plan is to record onto each of these cards and to see how many tracks in Pro Tools we can get to work reliably. Let's put the 30 megabit Ultra card into the nifty drive. And yes, it's a little fiddly because the micro SD cards are so small. And now into the computer. And as you can see, it fits completely flush to the side of my MacBook and matches the finish very well. So now we have the 30 megabit micro SD card in the nifty drive safely inside my MacBook Pro. Let's see what we can do with it in Pro Tools. So for each card, I'm going to create a new session at 44.1K sample rate and 24 bits to see how many tracks we can record on the card before Pro Tools complains. Let's start with 48 tracks put them all into record and start recording. Now you can see that I've got the system usage and disk usage windows open so we can see what's happening. And you can see that the disk activity rises to around 80% and occasionally peaks to 100%. And experience has taught me that if it stays at 100% too long, it's a sign that Pro Tools is not coping very well. And there you can see that Pro Tools has stopped recording. It takes a few moments before Pro Tools sorts itself out and leaves you with the files recorded up to the point it couldn't cope. Eventually you will get the disk too slow error message AAE9073. Now of course an AAE error rather than the old fashioned DAE error 9073 as I'm using Pro Tools 11 to do this test. So let's try 42 tracks and see whether that will work. So I'm just going to disable the record on the last six tracks and try again. Notice this time how disk activity hovers around 60 to 70 percent and this is a good sign that Pro Tools can handle this test okay. So it's been about five minutes so let's stop the recording and Pro Tools takes a few moments to process the files, and there, all is well. We have 42 tracks recorded at 44.1 24-bit. To remove the nifty drive, we need the hooky thing, or a paper clip will do, and you hook it into the side of the nifty drive, and you'll be able to pull it out. But don't forget to unmount it first. Now let's try the extreme 45 megabit per second card and see how many more tracks we can record onto that one. Again, I'm creating a new session at 44.1 24-bit and let's try 60 tracks with this card. After three minutes, 
all seems well. So let's add another 12 tracks and make 72 tracks and see if that will work. I'm going to drop into record just after where the 60 tracks finished. So Pro Tools is also having to handle and work around those files that are already on the card. Notice that the disk activity meter is much closer to 100%, but still drops back occasionally. And this is a sign that we're very close to the top limit. But after four minutes or so, it's still okay. So the 45 megabyte per second card can handle 72 tracks, whereas the 30 megabit card maxed out at 42 tracks. Moving on to the 95 megabit per second Extreme Pro card, let's see how many tracks we can get onto this one. Again, a new session at 44.1, 24-bit, and let's try 120 tracks and see if it'll handle that. I'll put all the tracks into record by holding down the Alt key and clicking on one of the record buttons, and away we go. Ah, no. After 44 seconds, it can't cope and drops out of record. So let's try 108 tracks. So again, I'm going to take the last 12 tracks out of record, place the cursor just after the first block, and back into record. This time we get to about 1 minute 40 of recording before it gives up. It does seem as if there is a limit somewhere in the system because we would expect the 95 megabyte card to be able to handle twice as many tracks as the 45 megabit card, which should work out at about 144 tracks. But we're already not being successful at 108 tracks. So let's knock it down to 96 tracks and see if that will be okay. Yeah. After only a minute and 10 seconds of recording, it gives up again. So now let's try 84 tracks, which of course is only 12 more than the 45 megabit card. And again, I'm going to drop into record just after the last block. After nine minutes or so, I filled the card, and it's really nice to see that Pro Tools handles this gracefully too. So there you have it. In the nifty drive, the SanDisk Ultra 30 megabyte card can handle 42 tracks, 44.124. The Extreme 45 megabyte card can handle 72 tracks. And the Extreme Pro 95 megabyte card managed just 84 tracks. Now this is a straight record test, but it does test the write speed very well. And also with the later tests, it shows how well that Pro Tools can handle these types of cards when there are other files already on the drive, which may of course be fragmented. Recording onto what is effectively an internal SSD drive without having to use the Thunderbolt or Firewire Pass is very attractive. So I'm definitely going to use the nifty drive with my MacBook Pro and my new Apollo Twin to take care of my location recordings. Yes, you can put normal SD drives straight into the SD slot on the side of your MacBook, but they do stick out. And SanDisk also makes something similar to the nifty drive, but that sticks out too. So the nifty drive is €34.99, for a flush mounting solution. So if that works for you, then check it out. See you again soon.